Oh, I'm wrong. This is going to be the most hobos of hobo productions. Pulling a girlfriend, probably pod, what, YouTube thing. I saw. There's my cat. He missed me all day long. I had to work. And I could go do stuff. Well, hello, everyone. Sorry for eating. Got home from NXT tonight from Daytona Beach. And I figured instead of getting a six hour hot dog, that the guy sitting two people next to me was loudly complaining about. I figured I would make my own three dollar hobo pizza. And because it is Friday, get my red wine. A few things make me feel good. Besides my red wine Friday, well, beer ration Thursday, a bunch of drinks Saturday. Because, oh my, I have to wake up for work in eight hours. But I'm here because I made it to the NXT live event here in Daytona Beach. Again, if anyone's out there in Daytona Beach, probably saw me. Very typically, I wear my Gargano y Champa NXT shirt. Sometimes I wear my Macho Man shirt. I don't like wearing non. WWE shirts. Just feels weird. Even though I did see a lot of Blood Club shirts there. I'm here to talk about NXT Daytona Beach. So hashtag first night show, which is NXT Daytona Beach. Who are you here with? Where are you sitting? Who are you excited to see? Whatever it may be, just make sure you use that official hashtag for outside the show and one of you will walk away. If I had to pay the 20 bucks to sit at ringside, well, first of all, the 20 bucks to sit at ringside really is kind of the best value. But if you can't get the ringside seats, get the $10 seats and sit up in the bleachers at the very top. It's so much better. In the pure line of sight. Lights are kind of okay. Except for, I think, for my little camera thing. Well, that's okay. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about that later. Again, my name's Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is off at her reenactments. One day I have to post videos of her reenactments to show you what she kind of does on a part-time basis. Because she's a part-time photographer, part-time reenactor, part-time... I don't know. I think it's just those two things right now. That's a lot better than me. I'm a part-time broken manager. Selling broken... Or broken stuff. Well, we'll not. My boss might actually watch this. Let's, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, those who have liked, thank you very much. Even if you've unliked or give me a thumbs down, thank you very much. At least you're commenting. You're trying to. You're. I'm trying to do things better. Eventually, the Hobo Production Studio. Let me get some pictures soon and actually soon it's going to be christmas season so you'll see this place kind of christmas decorated somewhat oh so again please like share comment and subscribe i've always replied to comments 
I've always emailed people. If you share this, that's good. You can email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And also, I have a secret name over at the Friend of Verse on Facebook. And I know I'm going to get this wrong right now. I'll try to do better. Favarius Black, thank you very much. You respond to some of the posts I've put up there. You get a free shout out. Again, I have my own Facebook thing. I try and keep that kind of private. Again, you separate the character from the person. Again, Hobo Tom is the 11. Regular Tom's that kind of. Actually, probably six or five on the volume scale. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go see a. I think Lanny Poffo interview. It's a genius. It's. I forget his first name, but it's the Macho Man's brother. It was Randy Poffo. You can go see his interview. The Macho Man was the 11. Randy Poffo was like the 5. Hobo Tom's the 11. Regular Tom. It was like a 6, probably. Not much difference. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's not much difference between Hobo Tom and regular Tom. But enough about that. Let's talk about some NXT. Here in Daytona Beach, it was a hot crowd. Matches were ham sandwiches. And here we go. It's a throwback. It's Friday. It's red wine. A ham sandwich. Really a ham sandwich card. I think there were only two really high points of the whole card. Everything else kind of tossed together. And you're going to see clips of that despite what Oh, uh, security guy told me to do and put away my camera. I know there's going to be spoilers in it. You know what? There's going to be spoilers anyway. So prepare to be spoiled a little bit. Mainly the May Young classic. How oh. Ido <coughs> Shirai. What was that? I thought I heard an echo. Was in the final. Or the Mayan Classic Finals. <laughs> sure wrong. You did not hear that from me. Okay, if, if you don't like spoilers, wait a second, this is pro wrestling. No such thing as spoilers in pro wrestling. No such thing as crying in pro wrestling. Well, let's start off. Again, this was really weird because they seem to really not sell out. It did fill up over time. But again, I will give NXT, listen, I'm a fair and, and I'll use the, the one tagline, I'm fair and balanced. But I'm honest. If you're a bad wrestler, I'll give you a can of soup. If you're a great wrestler, you're a flaming young. And everything in between. Or actually, if you're a bad, really bad wrestler, it's a piece of toast. So I'll call the spade a spade. And... This match was really so-so. I don't know if it's because it's school year on a Friday or if people just aren't spending... People, Hey, listen, Daytona Beach is not the richest place. You can go a couple streets down off of where I live and you can see, you can see bums. The one thing Hobo Tom hates are bums. They make the streets dirty with their garbage. They beg people for money. I'm a hobo. I work for a living. I collect aluminum cans and my other job. But again, this was, it just seemed to be a smaller crowd. It wasn't, there, weren't, there wasn't the pro, pro wrestling fan there. There were a lot of empty seats, especially in that second row. General admissions, you could kind of, again, you could sit in the hobo section and say hi to hobo. Really for the 10 bucks. Again, it was kind of semi-empty, even though the front seats were sold out. Even during the match, I could see the front row seats. Um, general admission. I mean, if you're at the if you're in the back for ten bucks, that's an amazing view. 
Um, now let's talk about a little about the show. I want to sh show some videos. And really the thing I do love, don't get me wrong, on Polovec, or Polovec, Breaking Kayfabe, Triple H, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. The best thing about NXT is that they do have the meet and greet, although there was no one spectacular there. There was, there was Sing someone who, who was not a Sing brother. And there was, I have her name, the generic Texas woman who I met before, who I actually have a selfie with. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll talk more about her during her match. And then there was, I forget her first name, it was Conti, something Conti. She was actually in the Royal Rumble, Women's Royal Rumble. And she was there to be like tossed out by a Bella. That was her job to be a job or to a fella. Walk up these steps and compete in that ring. Has the opportunity to become the WWE Champion with Samoa Joe. Goes one-on-one -on -one with the phenomenal AJ. So is Samoa Joe going to win the WWE Championship? are two other former superstars here at NXT that competed in this ring. One of those superstars is cashing in his Money in the Bank contract, that being Braun Strowman. As he goes up against the Universal Champion, the Big Dog, Roman Reigns. So you are going to see the superstars of tomorrow here tonight because some of the superstars that are competing in the Mae Young Classic are here tonight. And also one of the most entertaining tag teams in NXT is... Wow. Um, again, if the top row, they're on the mission, was, or the front row is really the way to go. I mean, the only problem is when you get to any NXT event, especially if you're in the general admission section, and be stuck next to that guy. Dude, I don't want to hear you complain about your $6 hot dog. You know what? My tummy will rumble at the end of the match. I'll come home, have a $3 pizza, a nice, nice. glass of red wine. Red wine. Yes. yes. And go on with me. Um, again, they kind of announce things. The Street Profits will be there. May young participants be there. I don't know, Sharon. I don't know. And really, he talked about how the Shield started out in NXT. The whole crowd started chanting, Roman sucks. I mean, that was kind of a thing. I was kind of upset. Uh, not, not upset, but just disappointed. I figured Amber, no Amber Nova would show up. And I do have a little card with Amber Nova, which I will show next time. From one of the indie scenes here. So I figured, hey, you know what? I can get this signed by Amber Nova. That would be great. And it was Conte, Singh, and Texas Woman. And I got my selfie with Texas Woman. Thank you. So again, it was, it was okay. I mean, you sit in the hobo section. I mean, worst comes to worst, you talk to the person next. And by the way, I would like to say this. NXT fans... As long as you're not that fan or that wrestling guy, they're the best people to talk to. I mean, I've always enjoyed talking to wrestling fans. Who just, especially like the like the regular fans who just come out and just want to know some stuff. And you talk about stuff and say, oh, this, like, this match is terrible. It's like, yeah, it, it is. This match is not so much terrible. It's just long. And you can say, oh, yeah, that person was this. This person was this. I'm like, oh, really? I saw them at this other show. And wrestling fans, for the most part, in Daytona Beach are really knowledgeable and really nice. And they're just fun to talk to. And it passes the time, especially if you have a long wrestling match. Again, we'll get to that later. But 
let's get back to the show. In the first match, you have Luke. I don't know. You can read the back of his thing. What? Find out his last name. This is Uma Kinde, and I know I'm getting that spelled wrong. Again, look at my notes, folks. If you can re realize that, if you can read that, power to you. You can come on the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling YouTube show. I mean, the crowd is live, though. I'll give the crowd this. The Daytona Beach crowd is really good. It can be really smarky, though. the first match should be though the first match of the night should really really get you excited this was like who are you and we've heard of you and it's the small guy versus the big guy so there's a clash of styles there which is good
and really the small guy just seemed to make the big guy mad. Very typical small guy versus big guy match. I mean, overall, it's a ham sandwich. I mean, the other matches they've had, um, oh, gee, I forget his name. But he was really good at fast pass, fast paced matches. Um, Mendoza, Raul Mendoza, amazing. He should always be in the first match. First match at Day City was Raul Mendoza versus Roderick Strong. Amazing match. I'm sorry to think about that. It is just the red wine kicking in. This is my second glass, which is like half a bottle. Raul Mendoza should be the opening match for every NXT house show, though. And, I mean, the final body slam was good. You understand why the big guy with a really powerful looking body slam would win? It's just not a good opener, though. The, the kind of I guess heel won even though the crowd cheered him. I mean, he did not heal like things, so it's like a face versus face, but like tweener versus tweener. It was a ham sandwich match. You do not want to start your mat, your card off with a ham sandwich. Because then your crowd goes like, whoa, 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 whoa. Just flat lines. It's like, well, it doesn't flat line. But it's just barely there. The second match you had Rocky versus Renee Williams. They're calling contest is scheduled for a one fall with a 14 minute time limit.
And Renee Williams is the repackaging of the other guy who would say, Feed me power! I like Feed Me Power Guy better. Because Renee Williams honestly just seems like a, dare I say, hobo version of the Velveteen Dream. I mean, people were chanting Rocky sucks and harkening back to The Rock. And then there was some Rocky, Rocky. One more sit. The, the one guy's thing, signature thing was to sit down. It was a hot, hot, was a hot crowd. Whenever he would take the glasses off, disrespected. I mean, it was just really fun, though. I mean, Renee Williams, or I don't know what his first name is, but Williams, he knows how to stay in touch with the crowd. That's good. Rocky knows how to stay in touch with the crowd. That's good, too. There seems to be a never-ending supply of sunglasses. This was a good comedy match. Unfortunately, it was a good comedy match. And comedy matches are, are, are so-so. Especially this one, because the two... Granted, I mean, granted, if I got in there, it would be a comedy of errors. Comedy of me breaking my nose. Unless it was AJ Styles. Then it's a four-star match. But me and, and Williams, I don't know. We could be a, a, a quarter Big Mac, maybe. But the thing is, with this, you don't know who the favorite is. Like, who do you cheer for? You cheer for both. So both are faces. And it's it's a good match. It just didn't ha And I gave it a ham sandwich. 
if they shook hands beforehand, it would have been that much better. And then you're like, oh, these are two faces. They're, they're here. They want, they want to make a name for themselves. I can understand that making, trying to make a name for yourself in your two faces. I can dig that. I mean, I, I do like the finish, the, the night night, where it's a reverse DDT leg drop. That's good. I like that. It just really didn't. It, it was good. Don't get me wrong. It was good. It was a ham sandwich. Ham sandwiches are good. If you're hungry, you eat a ham sandwich. It fills you up. Tastes good. Not bad, though. It's not terrific. And then you get into the third kind of part or match. It was a promo between this woman, who I wrote her name on this time, even though I did have a selfie with her. It was um, something Gonzalez versus Conte. Many things we have coming up in the WWE, including the first ever all-women's pay-per-view event, Evolution, October 28th. But before Evolution is the May Young Classic, which began this past Wednesday, but the first few first-round matchups will continue this Wednesday on the WWE Network. So what I do right now is I'm going to bring two guests to the ring. They are competing in this year's Bay Young Classic. You already saw them earlier tonight. Please welcome again, Brandon Gonzalez and Tainara Kachi.
Again, you saw the whole promo. Again, this is kind of that classic clash of styles. Um, you have the bigger, stronger woman versus a smaller, more agile, more nimble woman. Um, <laughs> what Gonzalez does not know, though, I wrote this down. Her butt got me about 300 likes on my very first YouTube video. If her butt was not in the thumbnails, I probably wouldn't have gotten 300 likes. They classy clones. Good match. There are some false finishes. I mean, the, the thing is, if you're a heel, Miss Gonzalez, I'll give you a very quick heel lesson. If you're going to use a foreign object, guess what? The referee is going to take it, and you're not going to win. It happens all the time. A very, I don't know, just a very cliche match. Again, don't get me wrong, it was a good match. I could go in there against Gonzalez, and if they let me wrestle the way I could wrestle, let her wrestle the way she could wrestle, it, that would be a ham sandwich match. But I'm a hobo. She's a professional. Two professionals should be a cheeseburger. Again, hobo, professional should be a ham sandwich. Professional, professional, especially of their level. Conte began to brag about how she was in the Women's Royal Rumble. Yeah, you jumped up to the Bellas. You were there for like five seconds.
I mean, I had to do that because I think my one little video program can go for about 20 minutes or so. So again, this kind of continues though. And I just have to edit it. So again, I shall shout out to you. Travarius Black. My, I do not possess high powered movie making equipment. Again, this is a hobo office. So I have to do what I can do. And then there was another match. It was Fabian Eichner versus Roberto something. Roberto something's good. This should have been the first match. He's suffering from this thing that's going on in wrestling where they're not getting their card order right. And this should have been really the, the first match. I mean, Fabian Eichner, a great heel. You know he's a heel by his actions. He runs down the crowd. He runs down his opponent. He runs down the referee. He is a heel. You want to boo him. You want to say you suck. And Mr. Clean and all the other bad, nasty heel chants that a s smart crowd can think of. But uh, I'm not even going to pronounce uh, Paul Rio, I think, versus Roberto Paul Rio. I do apologize. I was singing the hobo section. I'm trying to write this down as, as I'm <coughs> doing stuff, which I'll talk about later.
again, this was a really good fun. This this was probably the best match of the night. I mean, with the exception of kind of the match after the break, and, and it's like, really? That's the break? I'm like... It was a really short. No, there were seven, seven matches. This was number four. And this this was really good. Previously as a heel, so it's weird things. The the Renee Williams guy was someone else who was much better. <coughs> you didn't hear that from me though. But there have been a whole bunch of weird. Be packaging like I'll get into that later. Again, Roberto, he has some real potential. He has Raul Menendez potential where he should uh, be the first match of every NXT show, so the crowd would be like, "Yes, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy." And that's how you. That's how you should open up a show. Again, they suffer from not bad booking, but just wrong booking. Again, place your matches where you, the crowd is hyped. They're excited to be there. Instead of like, who are you? Who are you? Are you face? Why am I cheering you for beating him up? Why am I him for not being beat up by you? Again, it might be a personal issue. Who knows? Um, again, the, the Roberto, he has some darn good techniques. Very fast pace, high action, amazing crossbody moonsault. I love that. 
That's fun. That's what I want to see. I want to be entertained. I want to be wow. You don't have to open yourself up every time. I want to see every so often a cross body moonsault and just just run the ropes amazingly. And I just want to see that that you're into it though. He was into it. And then he's into it. Guess what? As a fan, I'm into it. Roberto, Roberto, Roberto. Boom. Boo, Einreich, boo, Mr. Queen, Mr. Queen, you suck. Roberto, Roberto, Roberto. That's what I want to do as a fan. I mean, I don't want to have it have it handed to me, but let me see the light at the end of the tunnel. Make it fun. I, again, the reason why this felt really like a developmental show, there was a lot of rough messenger. That's when the ref says something's wrong, guys. You okay? You, you good? That's all I'm doing that. Yeah. Oh, so you're fine. You can't continue? Okay. He, he wants you to drop the elbow and then do this. Okay. Here, you're good. Okay. Five, get up. Okay. Five, get up. And he's going to punch you in the face. I mean, so it's... When it's that obvious... I mean, to the casual fan, and you're like, why is that ref going back and forth? To, to the smart and to the person that knows a little bit about the industry, you're like, he really has to pass on those messages? messages? He has to tell them the spots? And, and it wasn't this match. It wasn't just this match. It was all the match. Like, eh, including the main event. Tell, you can tell us, like, time to draw. It's like, oh, really? This card's booing us. I'll get to that later. And again, oh, Fabian Eichhardt had an amazing pump handle gut buster. I thought that was the end of the match. I mean, again, there was like some amazing type of like moonsault thing or powerbomb thing. Uh, it blew my mind. This gets a cheeseburger. Because it was actually that good. And probably from the three previous matches, this was the best thing I saw. Which probably isn't good. And that leads us to the first intermission. If I was like, eh, this is so so. Who are these people? Again, the Daytona Beach crowd wants to see people they know. If they say something they don't know, they'll be like, and are not really impressed by them. Because Roberto did impress. And we're also like, eh, generic Texas woman. We've seen her stick before. And again, if you want to see someone's gimmick, again, it's so bad. It's repetitive and it gets boring when you see the same gimmick. Over and over and over again. Next match we have, actually, which is really fun, which was a shock. We have the finest Kuna Reeves, again, being the heel, being told, telling the announcer that he is the finest, versus Tony Nese.
I mean, this is amazing. I don't know. I mean, I'll give Conan Reeves this much. He's good at talking. He's good at being the heel. The problem is, only because I follow wrestling, I don't know if this is a step up for Conan Reeves or a step down for Tony Nese. But again, there are rumors that 205 NXT might be somewhat merging and you're going to see some weird insult intermingling of stuff. I don't know. Damn, maybe the rumors are true. Wrestling rumors true. And Nice, he's great at rope running. He has a 205 mentality. Run the ropes, do flips, do crazy stuff. Yay, Tony Nice. Again, he counts his abs and stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's great. Got a big pop from crowd. Connery's obviously zero abs.
I mean, he has some great chops. For some reason, I don't remember Tony Nese doing this in 205. And I know the WWE really kind of limits what wrestlers do. But Tony Nese was going all out of this match. It was fun. It was great. I mean, it's like he learned how to really wrestle and learn how to be a pro wrestler. I mean, Conan Reeves plays out the classic bigger person. And the stronger he does the heel moves. I mean, it's just been, and it's been a while since I've seen Conor Reeves. Last time I saw him, I think he was, he was face Conan Reeves from Hawaii. He was a happy-go-lucky Hawaiian. And, and now, he, now he's the, the finest heel. Almost pulling that Bobby Roode gimmick. Or even the Tino Sabatelli gimmick. I don't know. It was fun, though. I mean, again, he did the heel thing of, of very slowing down the match. Whereas Tony East wanted to speed it, speed it up. I mean, it was good. I mean, is Kono, he looks the part, acts the part. Actually, you know what he looks like? He looks like a hobo version of Naito from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Which isn't that bad of a comparison, if you can think about it. I'd love to be like Naito, trading the Under the Bridge Championship, see some bonus episodes, for a free meal. That's what Conan Reeves looks like. That's how he acts. So again, this was this was actually fun to watch. This was really the surf and turf match of the night. And it's probably because of both of the wrestlers and their interaction. Again, so you started off down here, came up a little bit. Unfortunately, gonna take a little dip back down. So then you have another women's match. You have Bianca Belair versus Io Shari. And, I mean, of all these women, the Japanese women are the freaking shortest. I don't think Io Shari's head comes, like, to the ropes.
definitely get into World Rants and Ray very soon. But, I mean, people were, were chanting Asuka. Ayo looks and acts and has the mannerisms of Asuka. I don't know if that's a Japanese female wrestler thing. I do like her outfit. Her outfit's different. It's very cat like. Bianca Bale, Belair again, and she's a heel. Um, again, you have the power of Bianca Bale being the being the larger woman, and then you have the finisher with the moon salt. And, and this was a really good match. I think the one thing that upset me, and it has nothing to do with the wrestlers, it probably has to do with kind of me a little bit. I mean, I do try and take videos, and I try to limit my videos really at most five minutes. I mean, a lot of times it's like quick two minute clips of the matches. But the security guy started again. But, but but listen, you have to lay, lay off the camera. And the first time you're done, okay, okay, I, I I know my role. But the second time, I actually did just take pictures. And he's like, okay, listen, this is the second time I'm warning you. Like, listen, I took pictures. They're for me. Show my nephews at home. Jackass. And I, I know it's his job. And I probably downgrade this to cheeseburger. And then the other two of you know, the four horsewomen came in. Honestly, they probably didn't want any spoilers. Well, guess what, WWE NXT? You're getting spoilers. The other two women that signed as part of the, the four horsewomen, the other two MMA fighters that came to the WWE, that came to WWE, guess what? They're in NXT now. I don't know their names. I don't care their names. You know what's going to happen? They're going to get food. By Hobo Tom and everyone who watches a Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling podcast. I don't care what my girlfriend thinks of them. I'm going to tell, tell her, my girlfriend in her ear when you see those two women come out, you will boo them. Or, no. <laughs> that night, he will boo them. So, everyone who watches, whenever they come out, boo them. And I know it's a hide spoilers. And that's the only time the guy, that's the only time like security actually like walked around and told people like, okay, no more pictures, no more pictures. But I'm going to rant and rave about this for probably about a good 10 minutes. So get ready for a good rant and rave. But they ran in and I tell you what, security really spoiled it for everyone. I know they don't want the spoilers, but he came up to me and said, okay, listen, you have to put that away. It's like, whatever. Then the other security guy came to the woman next to me, who was the more casual fan, said, okay, you can't take pictures or videos of this. And she's like, what? And I could hear her complain, and I almost agree with her. For the next match, everyone was taking their videos and stuff, and I'm always kind of looking. I'm a hobo. So I'm used to kind of trying being dodgy, playing the cat and mouse game. But when you upset the casual fan, this is Daytona Beach. There's nothing else to do here except for five weeks out of the freaking year. Daytona NXT comes to Daytona Beach. It's an event. The only other big event is the boat show. Be besides for five weeks. 
I mean, if you're going to upset the casual fan, the guy, the person who, who brings his wife or girlfriend, I don't know the relationship, they sat next to me. They were nice people. She wants to take a video. She's like, yeah, I want to show my friends this video. The guy says, eh, 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 you can't do that. We're going to take your cell phone away. The, the, the woman said not very nice things about him. And it's like, but that person's doing it. That person's doing it. That person's doing it. The guy next to me got yelled at for doing it, but everyone else is doing it. Just because she's showing her oh, boobies. And that white t-shirt. What's the crap then? You're going to let her take the video? Again, not, not very happy people. And that's the one thing where WWE really, and this is going to be my hopefully less than five minute rant, where the WWE really screws up is that they do tend to alienate the casual fan, the true casual fan, who shows up to events and said, oh, you can't do that. Casual fan's like, this is the first event I've been here to. I can do whatever I feel like doing. I'm not hurting you. I'm not throwing, th I'm not throwing things in the ring. I'm not cursing out the wrestler. I'm not using profanities. I'm not being a jackass. It's like, just let me take my video so I can show my friends. It's like, oh, no, we can have spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So, I don't mind if you alienate me, because guess what? Uh, you're going to alienate the casual fan? You're really going to drop your ratings down. We're all as bad as this. SmackDown's good. Pay-per-views are really hit or miss. But if you really want to draw fans in, just be like the indie scene. Take videos. Post videos. Oh, my God. Free advertisement. You can going to tell us how great we are. For free! We can't pay people to do that. So again, security guy, if you... I understand. Yeah, you can say, like, listen, let's just do this and this. You come the second time, I'm going to get pissed off because I'm, I'm, I know how the game's played. I can just start taking pictures. You're going to take my camera. I don't care what kind of pro wrestler you are. We're going outside. We're having work. You're going to take that woman's cell phone? Oh, <laughs> oh, my friend. You do not take a woman's cell phone. Oh, oh. That's probably all going on. So probably after this, I have just a whole bunch of pictures, unfortunately. Except for the end. I did get one kind of little video in one. It's the end of the show. And you guys like, uh. But again, that's my rant and rave. Again, WWE, you need to know your fan base. I am not the greatest voice for you. I'll say that first. I say I go to this show. I have had people say they like my videos. They might go to NXT shows just to see the entrances of some wrestlers or just to see that some people wrestle who I might talk about, who I, who I might give, give laudable praise about. Or they see a video, they're like, she looks cool in the ring. Bobo Tom put this video up. I want to go see her because... She looks amazing in the spot. 90% of the match could be boring. I might get a couple of minutes of it. And really, the spoilers? Really? <sighs> so, I, I do understand where you're coming from. Yeah, you can say. And I'm, I'm used to the cat and mouse game. But if you're going to do it to casual fans like the woman sitting next to me, I mean, that just takes the fun out for her. It takes the fun out for me because I'm like, you're really... Cool. And I know you're supposed to, like, just... Because at big events, they're like, as long as you don't sit there and videotape the whole show, a whole other issue, if I take a two-minute video, really? You're going to yell at me for that? Guess what? I'm going to show it to the next show. I'll go to Lucha Underground. I'll go to... PWG. I'll watch Chikara. I'll watch Pro Wrestling Gorilla. You want to bring your camera? Please! Free advertisements on how great we are. That's how I'm sure the whole match. Again, two clips. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you want to go try a uh, Chikara match? Let's see if they're taking too many video clips. They see an amazing spot happening. They want to share it with their friends. Their friends say, that's an amazing spot. I want to go see Chikara. All of a sudden, 
instead of filling armories and bingo halls, they're getting to like minor league hockey arenas and and real event centers. And they're like, yeah. WWE's like, eh, eh, eh. We well, want to stay in the event centers. We'll we'll almost sell out minor league hockey arenas. And we'll just black out the really top row of seats so no one knows that no one's there. But that's my rant and rave. I'm done. So again, security guy, I know why. Play the cat and mouse game with me, not with the person next to me. And just tell me once, I kind of know. And actually, after that, I just took pictures. And the second time he came up, actually, after I just took pictures, he's like, wow. I forgot how long this video got. I do apologize for my rant and rave. I mean, it's the one thing, if you're going to treat your fans like dirt, I understand why you treat the hobo like, like dirt, but not the people next to me who honestly just want to take this so they can show their friends and family. Because you know what? I'll wager the 20 bucks that I find in aluminum, that person's not coming back to your show. Because she's like, that guy was a jerk. And it wasn't the fan. It wasn't the wrestler. It was a security guy. It was some third person. The guy sitting next to me, he was quiet. He was he he, he talked to my significant other. He's like, oh yeah, this person's that. That person's that. Oh, is this your first time to an event? Oh yeah, oh, this is it's normally pretty good. It's like, and and say, oh, this is boring. It, it might not be boring. It might be long. And that's fine to disagree versus being boring or long or this person's great. That person's bad. But I mean, if you're you're just going to not let them enjoy the experience and share the experience. Well, why have them come out to the shows? So you can make your money? I understand. Don't get me wrong. I'm all about earning your dollars. But if you're a multi million dollar corporation, trust me, I'm not, you're not, nothing's happening to your corporation because I'm putting some videos on it. Or she's showing videos to her friends. She shows videos to her friends. Ooh, this is interesting. What is this? I don't want to come see it. I want to pay money. Instead, she's going to go home to her friends and say, you know what? I got some videos, but then the security guy was a jerk about me not taking videos. It's like, well, well if he was a jerk about not taking videos, I'm not going to pay 10 bucks to go there. I might as well watch it free on TV. Or I'll watch it at all. Just be mindful of that WWE NXT. I mean, I understand you don't want people like videotaping it for the whole two hours, but if you don't let people get their clips in, you're not going to last long. You go to New Japan, they say, go nuts. Show the whole freaking show. We don't care. Lucha Underground? We have no copyright. Thank you for the free advertisement. People might, I, I doubt it, but people might watch my Lucha Underground clips and say, I never saw that before in Pro Wrestling. I should go check that out. Again, it's, it's just a good business deal. Don't be so stingy. And again, I understand you don't want their people filming the whole two-hour show. If you're going to... Bunch of people are going to take a bunch of two minute videos. Just let them, let them enjoy themselves. I mean, if they really do, I mean, you'll tell if they they're sit there like this for two hours. First of all, the arms will hurt. That's a little burnout. But I don't know. It has to lighten up and just realize that they're going to alienate a large part of their audience. More so alienate a large part of their potential audience. People show up to Daytona Beach, next season town. Let's go see what this is. This is all. Oh, this is with WWE. Ten bucks. Catch wrestling and, and dinner. Wait, that, that wrestling was bad and, the, and the, the security guy was a jerk. I'm not going back to that. Paying ten dollars for that. I'm not going to watch pro wrestling, period. Again, that's one of the things I think that turned me off. Well, besides the rest. 
storylines were worse. Back in 2002 to about 2010, you go to a show, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. And it's like, what's the fun in it? Storylines were bad, wrestling was eh. Some people praise it. I don't. I said, you know what? For eight years, I didn't watch wrestling. I watched wrestling, I think, when I was five years old. I've probably told this story before. My sister used to take ballet and tap dancing. I would make sure we would get home on time at 3 o'clock. AWA was on. I would watch my one-hour wrestling show. And that got me hooked. Wow, this is amazing. WWE came. WWF came on, uh, first on Saturday nights, and then you had Monday Night Raw. I'm like, I can watch pro wrestling. This is fun stuff. This is good. This makes me smile. This makes me feel good. You have heels. You have villains. You have good guys. You have faces. The Hulkster, the Macho Man, over-the-top characters. The villains who are really bad and nasty. And that got me into it. And then you're going to say, oh, I can't make a recording of this and share it with others? How are you going to pass that legacy on? You're not going to grow as a company if you don't let things be passed on. Well, I've gone this You guys are probably upset at me by now. I apologize. I just had to get that off my chest, though. I mean, that was like the, the big bugaboo, and that really made probably the next wrestling match go down. Because, again, the... This match was a cheeseburger match. It was good. Again, I'm going to spoil things. Ayo Shirai is in the May Young final, is in the May Young Classic finals. Tough. And the two new MMA female fighters, they're in the WWE. Tough. What are they going to do? Sue me? Take my cat? I want your cat. Hobo Tom. Yeah. I'm done though. And again, it's one of those things that might influence me as someone who enjoys wrestling. It's like, you're going to do this to me now? Why should I come to the next show? November 10th. Or why should I go to Sanford? Why should I spend 10 bucks for a ticket, 10 bucks worth of gas. It's Friday, I still get to eat pizza in my house. And red wine. But why should I do all that, wait an extra half hour to eat, eat my yummy pizza and drink my red wine? Or you're gonna take you're gonna threaten to take my 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 dopey little camera away. A little handheld camera. So again, one of those things I have to think about. Well, not really. If I have off that day, I'm going. But again, if you're the casual fan, you're like, you know what? The wrestlers were good, but the staff treated me like garbage. Why should I go back? I'll I'll, I'll say this, and, and, and I promise, cross my heart, this will be the last thing I say to it before I get to the main event of the evening. It's like going to a restaurant, and the food is good, but the wait staff is terrible. Like, you had to wait 20 minutes to get a drink. And then they, for the most part, got your order right. But they had to come back and said, oh, did you want this on this? Yeah, Yes, I did. I, I, I told you I wanted that. I'm like, really? And the, and the food's good. Again, if you have a cheeseburger, cheeseburgers are good. If you screw up a cheeseburger, you don't deserve to be in the restaurant business. And you screw up a cheesesteak. And you make it like a hobo steakum, you shouldn't really be in the restaurant business. But again, the food's good, the service is terrible. Why should I come back and pay for that? Again, if, if it's a ch chain restaurant, eh, you say, eh, it's Applebee's. You know what? Maybe I'll take a month off and, and go to Chili's instead next month. And unfortunately, this this was a so-so yeah. match. That's it, though. And I'm just going to show a bunch of pictures. done for the last couple of minutes. Again, the second time security guy he said, threatened to take away my camera, which there would have been a big ruckus in the crowd about that. 
Because first of all, I would have said a big F, F U. And just guess what gestures behind this pad? Yeah. It would have been. And I'm sure the woman next to me might have spoken up for me. I doubt it, but that's up to her. So there's just a couple pictures from the match. You can see pretty jackass. So it was the Street Profits versus Oni Lorkin and Danny Birch. And supposedly this was for a shot at the NXT title at the NXT titles for the next taping. That just kind of seemed random and thrown in there. Street Profits are good. They 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 come into their pop. And even though it's kind of sec and security's walking around, and it was another security person that that, that bugged the woman next. Time. I know what I did was 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 questionable. What she was doing, dude, leave her alone. That's it. Um, kind of waiting for the handshake moment. The thing is, is that only that only Lorca and Danny Birch have new trunks. Is that being the traditional black? Um. Oni Lorcan has blue trunks with an American flag. Danny Birch has red trunks with a Union Jack on it. It's different, at least. And this is for the shots of the title. I, I mean, it was good. It was good. I mean, oh, this is where I start really going on the jackass security guy. In my notes, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. I skipped back, or I gave a preview. On the Street Profits, again, great character work. Again, very classic du double teams by the Street Profits. Um, the crowd, though, realized that this match was getting long, and the crowd started to get kind of unruly. They're like, oh, Okay, we can see so many headlocks. We can see so many European uppercuts. Let's pick up the pace a little bit. Three Profits said, and so did Oni Lorcan, but I think that was that kind of a prodding of the crowd because the crowd did chance, like, this is boring. A couple times, too. And again, it's a classic Oni Lorcan, really hard hitting match. Again, Danny Birch, known for his hard hitting abilities, Street Profits are more flamboyant. So again, very simply, whenever Oni Lorcan or Danny Birch were in, were, were in control of the match, very slow, methodical pace. Street Profits had a very quicker, faster pace. And again, you're, you're telling the tale of two different styles of teams. So it was good in that regard. Um, again, it's just... I think the thing, it just lasted a little too long. Oh, the other thing they started to do... That for all these matches, they started to introduce time limits. Like for the first couple of matches, the following matches go to over one fall and it's a 10 minute time limit. And I think the announcer, he must have been some new guy, I don't know who he was. But the, the crowd is so used to a cadence. The following matches go to one fall. One fall! When the crowd couldn't do that, they were like, why aren't you let us chanting? Why aren't you letting us do what we do best? Why are you ex excluding us from the action? You do not want to exclude the crowd from the action. You don't want... The other extreme is that the crowd to take over the action. So you have two extremes. On this end, you have excluding the crowd from the action. They're saying, no, we're just going to go on with our, with our regular cadence. Following the match is going from one fall and it's a 10 minute time limit. One fall... What? The other end, Beach Ball Mania. <laughs> so that's it. So finally, at the end, they kind of got the got kind of get the hints like, okay, you have to have this cadence. Following matches go for one fall, one fall, and it is a thirty minute time limit. Crowd is happy; they got to say one fall. Listen, if you want to keep the crowd happy, keep them involved. Let let them let them do their thing to an extent. Again, don't go full Beach Ball Mania. The following matches go for one fall, one fall. What harm does that do? Scheduled for 30 minutes. And then they introduced time limits. Like the first couple of matches were 10 limit time limits. 
then as you went on, as then as you went on the card, it was 15, 20 minutes, and this was a 30 minute time limit. So again, that was kind of different and unique. Um, wait, where am I now? Not Texas woman. I already talked about how Texas woman has a bubble butt. I didn't say that. Again, my girlfriend's not here to hear me say that, so it did not happen. But again, they finally let the crowd get involved. But this was a long match, and if you're not used to long technical matches, if you're the casual fan, you want to see action, 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 just not headlock, 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 European uppercut, headlock, armbar. The crowd was, was, was being to be like, yeah, this is boring. I think the guy, one, two, three people down, actually, they like left. This is boring. I'm out of here. I know how this is going to end. For most part, he predicted it too. Again, don't be that guy. You can know how a match is going to end. Just cheer. Don't pass on wrestling secrets, especially if the people next to you are kind of like new to the thing. Kind of ruins it. Um, again, it just seemed really overly scripted. Again, a lot of ref kind of selling. Okay, you're going over. Like, here we go over some to time on the draw. There is one minute left in the match. Oh, I know what he told him. So this is going to go for the full 30 minutes. And just hold the fan. And after that, some people started to leave. Because 30 minutes, unless you're really into wrestling, is a long wrestling match. It ended, well, it ended in time limit draw. The crowd's there chant five more minutes. And I, I think they realized that the crowd was rioted and never paid for another NXT show again if it did go to time limit draw. I think in like two minutes it was over, only lurking Danny Birch won. I think there were feel good moments they kind of celebrated. It was a face face situation. They celebrated with the Street Profits. It was okay. Again, this whole car, just to sum it up, because I have about four more minutes before I'm on my... Wow, I've talked for, half, for one freaking hour. Wow. That's a lot of... Even... I still have had videos in, too. <laughs> Get ready for a two-hour show, folks. I think the thing is, the Smarks knew what was going to happen and were either happy about it or, 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 real, or like me, really, the casual fan was like, this is good? I mean, that's the way it was. Again, it's a really interesting crowd. You see, I saw women showing off their tramp stamps. I saw women in evening dresses. Daytona Beach is that odd mix. Again, oh, overall, it was a ham I mean, it wasn't that good. It semi makes me question if I want to go see this show in Sanford, which is happening the 21st, by the way. Uh, I can't go to the show in Dade City because I know my girlfriend has to work. She has to start thinking about car payments for her car. Because again, I'm a hobo. I'm lucky I can afford my car payments. Or what car payments? I have to walk everywhere. I can't even afford a bicycle. So she's worried about car payments, so she has to work on Thursday. I have to work early Thursday, but it would be really sketchy to get all the way out to Date City in three hours. But again, there's the NXT show on Date City, and I'll, I'll, I'll still give their free plug for them. Not bad. I mean, let's just treat the fans better. And realize, even if it's a spoiler, who cares? Who's going to watch the hobo? The guy who calls himself the hobo Tom. Few people. I'd like to thank those people. But I'll probably go to the one in Sanford again. Depends on my kind of real work schedule. And see how things play out. Again, this kind of left. It's like, yeah. It was that. Who are you? Why should I cheer for you? Oh, generic Texas woman. I know who you are. Oh, Brazilian woman. Brazilian women are hot, except for you. So, again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. 
Again, if you feel to disagree with my opinions, that's fine. Agree with my opinions? That's that's better. Again, just like, share, comment, subscribe. Again, only because he did. I did mention this on the Friendoverse, which I think is a closed group. Now you have to like take a quiz.